Hey guys, as your chill key time. So it's been a little bit, but I'm gonna make part two on how to train your German Shepherd puppy um, to do protection work. So in part one, you saw me doing the rag work with the puppy, and uh, we continued with that and developed the dog. Now um, we have the same puppy. I'm gonna put her on the table, and I'm gonna show you the next stuff that we will do. Um, I have a couple of items here. So I've got a, um, a leather bite pillow and a line attached to the leather bite pillow. I'm gonna explain to you why I use the leather. So I use the leather because it's become slippery when wet. So if the dog is biting with anything less than maximum commitment, it's gonna slip right out of the dog's mouth. And I can use the power of frustration to get the dog to bite harder. The goal, whether you're creating a dog for um, IGP, sleeve, sleeve biting sports, or for a suit biting sport, or for personal protection or police work, is a dog that bites with 100% commitment and hardness. So I do not want dogs that bite soft. I don't want dogs that um, slip on the grip. I want a dog that's full and hard whether they're pushing or whether they're pulling. I don't want half grips and I don't want soft grips. So this allows me, now of course look, there's a certain amount of genetics involved in the quality of a dog's grip, but training can 100% make it better, fix a problem, even if there's a genetic foundation to that problem, or it can make it worse. And one of the biggest mistakes I see in protection training, especially with amateurs, what they do, and listen, I did it as well when I was first starting, what they do is they don't build the correct foundation. They're in such a big hurry to get to the sleeve because for them, the, the sleeve has such a big significance. The sleeve is, oh, he's on a sleeve. Now he's a real protection dog. It's like, no, I see so many dogs bite like utter crap on a sleeve and I have to take them off the sleeve and I have to go back to foundation. Right now, I want to build the correct commitment, the correct grip strength, and also the correct bite mechanics. So bite mechanics, full, hard, and if I'm making an IGP dog pulling, or if I'm making a suit dog, pushing, 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 or a police dog, okay? And we can get into why we pull or push in different sports um, or, or different disciplines later, but for this dog, we've decided to make her a personal protection or maybe a police dog, so, I'm gonna be creating pushing grips with this dog, so I'm going to be rewarding her for pushing. So, first, I'm gonna put her on the, uh, the table, okay? And you're going to see me generate the, the arousal, okay? So, this is a prey aggressive dog, so the arousal is going to come from movement and seeing the toy. So, I'll probably put the toy on the ground, she's gonna freak out and start barking, I'm gonna move it this way and that way, and she's gonna be losing her mind. And when she's on the end of that back tie, just screaming, then I'm gonna pick up the toy, I'm gonna bring it in, okay? I'm gonna make a miss, a miss, and I'm gonna let her grip, boom, she's gonna hit it, and the second she hits it, I'm gonna back off on the line, and I'm gonna make this on the line, where I'm not yanking with all my strength, but I'm giving it good little sharp jolts so that the dog understands that she must grip and hold firmly. The reason why I'm moving away from the dog is because I don't want stress on the dog. So if I'm really close, there's more pressure on the dog. If I'm farther away, then the dog, the dog has more relief from stress. Now this dog's a little bit more advanced. This isn't the first time she's done it, so I'm gonna kind of rush a little bit through the steps. But in the beginning, if this was a puppy, I wouldn't be here, you know, like doing all this stuff. I would be more out a lot and really kind of build the confidence of the dog and the correct bite mechanics going out and coming in. So if the dog's biting really nice, I'm gonna walk up the line, I'm gonna grab the wedge, I'm gonna set it, She's gonna offer the correct behavior. I'm gonna react, oh, and I'm gonna back off, okay? And again, build that confidence, build that drive. When the dog's bite mechanics are good and everything's good, then I'm gonna add some distractors. So, distractors and, and pressure, environmental pressure, stick pressure. I like using sticks, and, and a lot of protection and police dog trainers use sticks and whips because you can use it to create some aggression, to create a distraction around the dog, to make a little bit of stress on the dog, teach the dog that you know you can be touched before and during a bite, and it's a lot safer obviously than using your bare hands, because then there's a chance the dog may come off and redirect on your hand, and 
you know, it also allows you to kind of build build some, some arousal with the dog as well if you know what you're doing. So once the dog's bite mechanics are good, I'm gonna introduce a little bit of like, hey, 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 you know, make that aggression, make that arousal, then turn it into the prey, prey, then when the dog's on the grip, right, maybe I'll introduce the pressure a little bit away from the dog in the beginning if she does well, I'm gonna remove the pressure, then I'll bring it back. If she offers me the correct behavior, which in this case would be a punch or a push, I'm gonna immediately remove it, praise the dog, calm the dog, right? And then, you know, we'll, we'll either rinse and repeat or we'll end the session. You can apply that to anything. So if you're a rattle jug guy, because you're preparing your dog for PSA, right? You're gonna do the exact same thing. You're gonna make the arousal, and you're gonna show the prey item, make the prey drive, right? Maybe put it away, make the arousal, prey drive, right? Give the grip, and then maybe if your dog is ready, if your dog isn't showing hesitation, then you can add a little bit, and then when the dog offers the correct behavior, you remove the pressure. The worst thing that you can do is put the dog on the grip, and then introduce pressure the dog has never seen before. So the dog's on the grip, and, you're, and the dog comes off. Well, that's a great way to break your dog and create you know, a problem that's gonna be much harder to fix. I'm gonna introduce the pressure before the grip. Because if I introduce the pressure before the grip, I'm gonna see if there's a problem. If the dog's really flinching and blinking and showing me aversion to this, well, I know the dog's definitely not ready to bite that and have this in the picture. So I'm gonna make this before, and I'm gonna generate arousal, I'm gonna make the dog miss the wedge and just make the dog crazy a little bit, a little bit, and I'm gonna put this away and give the dog the grip, and the dog's gonna learn the grip is the safe place. The grip is where the pressure goes away. And then later on, we can bring the pressure into the actual grip, and then the dog will learn, when I punch into the grip, the pressure goes away. And then we can progress the dog from there. So I'm gonna bring her in, and we're gonna get started. alive so it creates that grip. Now I'm going to come in, make a little fight, set, oh, move away, again, fight, oh, right, and you can see she punches in, right, that's what I wanted, you can see there's no gap behind her mouth there, and if she allows the, the, the gap right away, I'll give her a chance to set, but if she lets go, it's okay, that's part of it, I'll refrustrate her, oh, man. Now I'm gonna settle her, you see my hand goes under the chin, and I calm the dog, calm, not crazy petting, calm, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. Oh. a little bit in my hand, see, yeah, good girl, you can do this with your own puppy, yeah, good, she's a little growly, you can see her kind of glancing around again, looking at the different stuff, it's because she's a little bit more reactive in her mindset. So I have to work a little more to build some more possession and fixation on the object with this dog. This is a type of dog where there's some aggression in the dog. Oh! dog frustrates very easily, okay? And that frustration is great, because I can use it to generate arousal, but she also has a little bit of nerve. 
which brings some aggression, but also not extreme prey possession. So I have to do things to manipulate her and create more prey possession than maybe is there naturally. The reason why I popped it out of her mouth that time is became, she became very growly and she was pulling. And I want to teach her that pulling is never gonna, that pulling in the hecticness will never be successful. Oh! Yeah. You must push, you must be firm, hard, and calm. Oh! Yeah. yeah. Good girl. And you'll notice I give her a little shriek, a little squeak every time she offers me the correct behavior, right? Of the push. Oh! Yeah. Good girl. Oh! Okay. So now she's out there. Good. And now she's learned she can lose it, so I can already feel her biting harder, right? Good. Come in again. Yeah. Good. Now I'm going to add a little something, a little collar. Ooh. Right? I don't want the dog to come off if she does. Good. Yeah. Good girl. Nice and relaxed. And again, not the most genetic prey, prey possession that, that can exist there. I know the lines of this dog. This is a puppy from my program. So I kind of know the parents and I know how they are. And there's a fair bit of aggression there and the touch of nerve which brings that aggression. But there's also the natural grips, as you can see. And there's also that frustration. And the frustration can bring power if you channel it properly. Good girl. Good. So now I'm going to introduce the uh, stick or the whip, and you can kind of see a little bit about how I use that. Pause the video. on the grip, she's going to punch in, right? We're going to manufacture that. So she learns the only way to make pressure go away. There's something I don't like that the decoy is doing. Punch in. Yeah. So this is why I like the leather. It's getting slippery. And you can see now I want to take it away from her so I can do something else. Oh.
Session. 